All right, everybody, it's time to talk about essay goals, this time concentrating on the almighty thesis statement. This is clearly one of the bigger areas of challenge for a lot of students in the class is how to elevate your thesis statements above that high school level. Um, there's not one easy way of doing it, but I do have a uh, structure that I think a lot of students have found helpful over the years. So um, this might not answer all of your questions, but it's certainly going to help get you on the right path. So before we jump into essay goals with uh, thesis statements, I'm going to take you to the rubric for your most recent essay, The Lord of the Flies Argumentative Essay. And there's a couple of spots on here that I want to point out. Um, thesis statement surpasses high school level. One of the important components of getting into that 789 range for organization um, comes from, again, how, what's the central statement that you're using as your thesis and how complex is it? And then this one is the, uh, another one, the critical thinking slash unique perspective uh, score. So this is like a score bump in general. You might remember on the first week of school, you filled out a questionnaire. One of those questions was how deep of a thinker are you on a scale of one to 10? And you know, there is definitely a bonus um, awarded to essays that demonstrate this kind of critical thinking or this unique perspective. Um, and you know, if you are somebody who thinks on a deeper level, if you're somebody who tends to ruminate on different topics, if you pay attention to what's going on in the news and why things are important, and you know, again, um, the more you can kind of think on a deeper level about why things matter, um, the easier it's going to be to incorporate that level of thought in your own essays. So this, like I say, it's not an easy thing to achieve if you don't feel you're a, a deep thinker or a critical thinker, but you know, always kind of push yourself to just think a little bit more about something and not go with maybe the obvious answer. That's, that's one of the things that will help kind of elevate the overall quality of what you're doing. So let's get back to this. So you looked at in class today some high school level thesis statements. And um, in general, high school level thesis statements tend to be a little bit on the short side. Uh, they are concise sentences where the writer states exactly what will be argued in the essay. And this kind of sounds like, hey, that's what I'm supposed to do in a thesis. Well, we're going to try to actually go beyond that a little bit. Um, not just saying exactly what's going to be argued, but um, getting into why it's important and what else it reveals about the world in la at large. Uh, they tend to be argued using only a plot summary um, or pointing out the author's use of a literary term. Um, so again, a lot of times high school level thesis statements are a little bit more simplistic in their approach and the argument that they're setting up. Um, and they might be a little overly broad in their scope, which means you've got to argue it using plot summary rather than concentrating on specific details. They lean toward agree or disagree only without saying anything else. So a lot of times you're given a prompt or a topic or an idea and it's, you know, yes, I believe this is correct or no, I don't believe that's correct and you know they kind of leave it at that and then there's this thing called the three-prong thesis statement which i know is a comment i left on some of your essays and this is um this is a style of writing a thesis statement that we are usually taught starting in middle school and it, it kind of carries over a little bit into uh, freshman and sophomore year now the three-prong thesis statement is where you establish um, a main point and then you actually include the three ideas that will become the topic sentences for your paragraphs, for your body paragraphs. Um, Three-prong thesis statements are okay, They're, they serve their function, but they're also a little bit limited um, in terms of um, bringing in another level of complexity and it's a little bit repetitive. I always found them to be a little bit repetitive, you know, like this is what I believe for these three reasons. You know, the first reason is this is that exact same thing that I already said. And then you get to your second body paragraph. The second main reason is, you know, this exact same thing I already said. So they're, they really kind of keep you stuck in that formulaic five paragraph structure. And, you know, as AP 11th graders, um, you want to sort of rise above that now. Um, you know, it's probably done your, its job. The, three prong thesis statements do their job in terms of getting you ready for high school level writing. But now we want to go above that. So we'll look at some of those example uh, high school level thesis statements uh, that you saw on that handout. So here's one that is problematic. Even though Jack's leadership in William Golding's Lord of the Flies leads to destruction, careful analysis reveals that it's actually more effective than Ralph's collaborative approach. So the problem with this one is it contradicts itself. It says, look, 
it's a terrible idea because it destroys everything, but it's actually better, right? And if you're gonna make a, um, an argument, it's better to just kind of phrase the whole thing from the standpoint that you're taking. If you're gonna say it's more effective, don't even mention the fact that it leads to destruction and just you know, concentrate on those areas um, that show that it was effective and that was, uh, it was superior. So at the end of the day, like I say, not a very interesting uh, thesis statement. Here's another one. Um, William Golding's Lord of the Flies contains many examples of strong leadership styles that the reader can, can analyze. Okay, So we've got the key words of the prompt, but it's not really taking a um, stand. It's just saying that it's, it's really broad and, and really vague in its scope. Um, and it's just basically saying that there are leadership styles that you can see in the book, but it doesn't take a, a stand, right? It doesn't really make a point. So that's not a very effective or interesting thesis statement. Here's another one here. William Golding's Lord of the Flies illustrates the struggles between collaborative and authoritative leaders through the characters of Ralph and Jack. So again, it's not taking a stance. It's just saying that these are two styles that you, you can see in the book through these two characters. Um, and you know, if you're gonna build your argument here, it's just gonna be basically argued using, using plot summary. So again, a little too broad in its scope, fails to take a stance, it's gonna be kind of stuck on that nine point scale. Um, here's one that gets better, but it's still a little too vague in its scope. The benefits of Jack's authoritative leadership in William Golding's Lord of the Flies outnumber those of collaborative leadership, proving it to be a superior form of the government. All right, so we're getting there with this one, but it's still a little, again, too vague in its scope. It's basically saying that, okay, at least I now know that I'm saying authoritative is better because the, benefit, uh, the benefits outweigh you know, those of the others. But you're basically saying it's better because it's superior, right? It's, it's better because it's better. Um, so again, it's just the, the language needs to be worked on here. But I, I will say this is moving in the direction that we want to move in. Okay, so what do all high school level thesis statements have in common? At the end of the day, if you're a college professor, they're just not very interesting. They all sound like the same thesis statement, right? Um, so how do we go above that? Well, now we're going to get into um, college level thesis statements. If you flip your sheet over on the notes, um, you can kind of paraphrase this however you want to. But basically, a college level thesis statement is going to do what we call setting up the um, academic argument about Twinfold. So it's going to have some of the key ideas, um, but it's really just going to kind of uh, set them up so that it'll kind of hint at the main ideas that are going to um, drive the body paragraphs. It's not just a general summary um, that's going to make what are called promises about the ideas that the essay will explore. Um, so hopefully that'll be a little bit more clear once we look at some examples. It's also going to go beyond the text. If you're writing about, an, uh, about a book or a piece of literature, um, you want to bring in something from outside the text. Uh, state something insightful or connect it to ideas not found in the text itself. So you might think about society, you might think about other schools of, of thought like you know, psychology for instance or sociology. Um, you know, again, what's going on in this book and, and what does that make you think about in the world, right? And how can we maybe draw some connections that people might not see? Finally, uh, college level thesis statements aim to be provocative, intriguing, and or insightful. Uh, in uh, ideal situation, you're all three, right? But this is kind of what you're aiming for, okay? Now, um, one of the most useful things that I've shared with my students is this thing here called the magic thesis template. So this is a starting point for building a thesis statement. It goes like this, by looking at blank, one can see blank, which most readers don't see, and then this is important because blank. So by looking at blank, here's where you insert something specific from the text. So by looking at Jack's uh, leadership, authoritative leadership style in Lord of the Flies, one can see, uh, insert something, uh, insert what the specific thing symbolizes or why it's important. Here again is where you want to challenge yourself and try to pick out something uh, unique about the text. So one can see at the very least you have to say the fact that it is superior to um, you know, the other kind of leadership, whatever it is that you're saying. And then this is important because, and here's where you really got to push yourself, insert an observation about something outside of the text. Um, again, something about society, humanity, maybe it's gender roles, maybe it's racism, maybe it's attitudes, religious beliefs, whatever. But try to think about, okay, so if this is what I see going on in the book, and this is, if this is what I think is interesting about um, what's going on in this book, you know, again, what does it reveal about something outside of the text? And, you know, what is an intriguing idea or a thought-provoking idea that I can kind of tie into here? 
So the thing about the Magical Thesis Statement template is that it forces you to look at something specific from the text to make an observation um, about why it's important and then to connect that observation with something outside the text. It, it forces you to think at three different levels, all right? Um, and that is, again, a good starting point to get rolling. So now we'll look at some college-level thesis statements. Um, the Magic Thesis Statement template will give you an overly wordy thesis statement. You always want to revise it and condense it and try to shorten it. Um, so this would be one example of that. By analyzing the leadership style of Jack and William Golding's Lord of the Flies, one can see the destructive nature of all authoritative rulers obsessed with their own image of power, highlighting the dangers of such leaders even in dire circumstances. So you've got the something from the text, uh, William, uh, I'm sorry, the leadership style of Jack. You've got an observation about it. It's destructive, all right, because we've got um, rulers obsessed with their own image of power. And now we're, again, um, clearly we're going to take it to leaders in society, right? Um, highlighting the dangers of such leaders, even in dire circumstances, all right? Um, so there you go. You've got your one, two, three levels of thought, and we were um, getting, you know, much more uh, complex in what it is we're saying about the book. Um, magic, uh, I'm sorry, uh, college level thesis statements. Don't be afraid to say something a little strange or a little unexpected, all right? Um, you want to try to be provocative in your language and you want to be try to prov provocative um, in your thoughts, right, in your observations. So, you know, um, again, don't be afraid to be a little bit bold in your assertions here. Um, the boy's preference of Jack's authoritative leadership in William Golding's Lord of the Flies illustrates humanity's hidden desire for domination thereby explaining this leadership style effectiveness over collaborative efforts in government. So this idea that deep down inside we all really desire to be, um, you know, uh, uh, dominated by others. And, and, you know, again, that's this kind of weird thing to say, um, although there are, are theories about this. And, you know, again, using that as um, a way to explain the fact that we have throughout history had so many leaderships prefer this style and, you know, an argument can be made that it is more effective um, than collaborative efforts have been very different, you know, collaborative efforts have their limitations because, you know, you're always trying to build consensus and you're always trying to, it seems like there's nothing but squabbling going on all the time. So there's a lot going on with this one. Again, it's a little strange, a little unexpected. Um, college level thesis statements create an argument that builds from one point to the next and here's where we talk about making promises about what, what, what ideas will be fulfilled by the body paragraphs so here we go William Golding's Lord of the Flies demonstrates the superior ability of authoritative leadership to effectively maintain order in the face of chaotic circumstances as Jack clearly illustrates uh, through his domination over Ralph in the quest to be the chief so unlike that three-pronged thesis statement where we're basically laying out what our topic sentences are going to be. These are just the ideas that are going to sort of drive the body paragraphs. I'm obviously going to highlight um, authoritative leadership and, you know, um, get into some of those chaotic circumstances and all of the factors that allowed him to thrive as the chief, the more chaotic things became, became throughout the book. Um, and again, just this quest to be, ch to be chief, this power struggle between the two. Um, so there's, you know, again, um, rather than summarizing what's going to say, what's going to be um, stated, you know, using your three prong thesis, you're just kind of making some promises of like the big ideas that will drive the body paragraphs, and and each body paragraph would be sure to touch upon those. Um, this one's really important. I really like this one. I think it explains um, a lot about college level thesis statements. It, it has to say something about the text you discuss exclusively. So what that means is your thesis statement can only be argued using the book Lord of the Flies. Or if I asked you to do a different text, it can only be argued using that text. Check this out. William Golding's Lord of the Flies demonstrates the dangers of authoritative leaders who are obsessed with power. That thesis statement, um, you could substitute many, many, many different books in here. Um, you could do George Orwell's... Um, uh, 1984 or Animal Farm, for instance, either of those books uh, could could fit this thesis statement, talking about authoritative leaders who are obsessed with power. But if you look at this one, all right, 
William Golding's Lord of the Flies demonstrates the superior ability of authoritative leadership to effectively maintain order in the face of chaotic circumstances, as Jack clearly illustrated uh, through his domination um, over Ralph and the quest to be chief. You've got enough specific details here that you know it can only be argued using uh, Lord of the Flies. There's no other book. Uh, that's going to be able to do what the rest of this is going to do. I can't just swap out another, um, you know, author name and book title here and have the rest of this still make sense, right? Um, and then this is another good one to think about, another good one that I think explains quite a bit. A college-level thesis statement is going to make most of the plot irrelevant. Um, so this is nice because it's going to help you avoid summarizing the entire book. You want to concentrate the details and the evidence that you bring from a text and have a little bit more of a laser sharp focus in terms of, okay, this is the part that's really important and this part over here is the part that's really important. And you can skip most of the plot. Um, so if you looked at this one, William Golding's Lord of the Flies illustrates the struggles between collaborative and authoritative leaders through the characters of Ralph and Jack. You would have to summarize 90% of the book to effectively you know, describe uh, and, and prove this thesis statement. This one down here, though, the contrasting leadership styles in William Golding's Lord of the Flies prove the benefits of Ralph's collaborative leadership style, allowing society to concentrate on the importance of working for the greater good. That can't really be argued only plot summary. The writer must concentrate only on key, well-chosen scenes that relate to this concept of working for the greater good. And that, again, is going to make a much more intriguing and memorable and uh, insightful argument. So um, again, college-level thesis statements, you know, there's a lot of different ways to look at them. They're not the easiest thing in the world to bump up to. They take some time, they take some practice, but I do think that the magical thesis statement template is a useful tool to help you get there. And then these other guidelines hopefully have helped uh, put some of the um, ideas in perspective. All right, I will always take the time to look at thesis statements with you guys and to look at sample thesis statements in class. So um, definitely look at that as an area of challenge, um, but also a good goal to have early on in the school year. All right, well, I'll see you in class. Thanks. So